subtractive color theory. We've already talked about what happens when we add colors of light in the additive color theory. So now we're going to look at just the same kind of thing, but from a different perspective. So this isn't anything new, it's just looking at it differently. So when we talked about additive colors, you'll recall from the last lesson, when we talked about the additive colors, we were adding colors of light, right? But we were focusing on reflected light. Focus on reflected light. And so to do that, we said, okay, if you have a blue object, right? Or if you have a, uh, a red object, and if you have a green object, these are the three sort of primary colors of the additive theory. And that's because when you shine red, green, then blue, this, this signifies white light because it's um, all the colors mixed. The blue reflects to our eyes, and we said that the green and the red, they turn into heat, so we don't see them any longer, right? These turn to heat. And so because this object reflected one single color of light, it reflects blue, we called blue a primary color because there's only one color being reflected. And the same was true for red. If we draw the red, green, and blue. So this again is, is white light that's striking something. And uh, this time the red reflects but the blue and the green turn into heat. So they don't really reflect. They turn to heat. Or they are, are absorbed, right? That's what we say, they're absorbed. So this reflects only red light. Reflects red light. And then the same thing over here. We shine the white light, which is a mixture of all three colors. The three primary colors of light make white. This one reflects green, but the red and the blue are what we say absorbed. They are now turned into heat, essentially. They're absorbed, and so this reflects green. So you see how we're looking at the primary colors as the colors that are one single kind of light being reflected. Right. So far, so good. For the subtractive theory, we're going to focus on light that is absorbed, not reflected. Whoops. So for subtractive theory, we're going to focus on the light that is absorbed. absorbed. And so we're going to look at what color things would be if they absorb only one color of light. Okay. And so uh, if we start with our, our colors, here's my best sort of color that I can use for this blue green of cyan. So if we have an object that is cyan, and I'll, I'll write cyan underneath so we remember what color that is. And then we take an object that is yellow. Don't need to write yellow because that's obvious. And then we take a color that is sort of magenta. When the same three colors of light shine red, green, and blue on here. So red, green, and blue. The blue and the red, sorry, the blue and the green in this case, the blue and the green are reflected and the red is absorbed. So in this case, only one color turns to heat. So all we're doing is turns to heat. And we say that red is absorbed. 
So we call cyan absorbed. Oops, let me spell that right. We call cyan a primary color because it absorbs one color. In, a, in additive theory, we called it a primary color if it reflected one color. That's the only difference. And then if we did the same thing for yellow over here, red, green, and blue light, same kind of white light shining, we would find that yellow reflects uh, the red and the green. And the blue is absorbed or turned into heat. Heat, right? In fact, I could be writing the word absorbed over here to remind us that. Absorbed. Red is absorbed. So we would write here, uh, blue is absorbed in this case. Blue absorbed. So you see how this yellow absorbs one color of blue. And then, of course, you can guess what would happen with magenta. Red, blue, and green light. But the green would be absorbed, and the red and the blue would reflect off of this object. That's why we get the magenta. So there's two reflected colors. That's why these are the secondary colors in additive theory, because there's two reflected colors. But if you look at it kind of in reverse, then there's only one color absorbed, so these become the primary subtractive colors. Green is absorbed or turned into heat. So the primary colors of subtractive theory, then, are cyan, yellow, and magenta. Now, I didn't write that up here. I should write that uh, magenta color here um, because we're not sure what color that is, magenta. And then underneath it, we would can write that the green is absorbed. Now, when you put paint on something and you paint it, the molecules in that paint will absorb certain lights and reflect certain light. And so when we're dealing with pigments and paints, it's much simpler to think about the subtractive color theory and think about what's being absorbed or subtracted out of the incoming light. And then what's left is the color that we get. So this is where we start to understand the secret of you know, grade three paint station, where we were mixing paints and getting different colors. In this case, if you mix red and yellow pigments, red and yellow makes, what is red and yellow? Red and yellow light, or sorry, red and yellow makes green, right? Is that how it works in uh, mixing colors? Let's, let's take a, a simpler example. Let's do uh, what happens when you mix uh, blue and yellow, sorry, makes green, right? Blue and yellow makes green? That's right. Got it wrong. So let's, let's see what happens. Why does blue and yellow make green? All right, let's ask us that. But before we do that, let's remember that the colors cyan, yellow, and magenta look like other colors. So here's, here's what I discovered when I was in kindergarten and I went to the paint station. And if we're talking about all the colors absorbing here, then when you mix the three primary pigments, as they're called, these are sometimes called primary pigments, not so much colors. We use the word pigments because these are more like paints. And when you mix them, you're supposed to get black because they are absorbing all of the colors, right? If you imagine putting three of these paints together, the cyan is absorbing the blue and the green, the yellow is absorbing the red and the green, and the magenta is absorbing the blue and the red, there'd be nothing left to reflect. And you would end up with black. Black is the color of all three of these pigments mixed. Whereas with light, remember, when you mix all three, you get white, because it's talking about what's reflected. Okay. So... When I mixed my three colors, the primary colors we're taught are red, uh, blue, 
yellow and red, red, blue, and yellow. And so when I mixed red, blue, and yellow paint in kindergarten, I found that I did not get black. I got kind of a crappy brown color. And you might have noticed that too, even though we were told that if you mix them, you get black. And when I asked the teacher, they made some excuse about, well, it just depends on how much you mix them or something like that. But that wasn't really true. What you have to understand is that blue, red, and yellow here are just approximate words we use. Blue and cyan are very close together. Cyan is kind of a shade of blue. Yellow, of course, is yellow. And then red is sort of a shade of magenta or vice versa. Magenta is kind of an off red color. So when we talk about blue, yellow, and red, what we really are talking about is not pure blue. We're talking about cyan. This blue color here is cyan. And yellow is yellow. And then when we talk about the red, we're not talking about the uh, perfect pure red. We're actually talking about a shade of red called magenta. If you mix cyan, yellow, and magenta together, you get perfectly good black. And we know this because your printer does it all the time. Your printer does not use blue, yellow, and red ink. It uses cyan, yellow, and magenta because those are the proper primary colors or pigments in subtractive theory. And so we have to remember that for kindergarten, we can tell kids that cyan is blue and we can tell them that magenta is red. But if they try to mix pure red, blue, and yellow, they're only going to get crappy brown because that's not actually the primary colors. So artists who talk about these primary colors right here, they're making a slight, a slight sort of, um, uh, I guess you could say, approximation. They're not actually talking about the purest colors here. They're talking about shades of colors. And so it's, it only works perfectly if you use cyan, yellow, and magenta. Because you can see from up here, all right? In fact, we could, we could understand um, what would happen then. So when you mix paints, if you mix blue and yellow, you get green, right? So let's imagine an object. So a blue object, whoops, let's go to blue. Let's look at how this might work. Here's a blue object. And here's a yellow object or yellow paint. Let's say they're paint. Now I'm only going to draw what's what's absorbed. Okay, the blue is absorbing green, and it's absorbing red. That's how it's blue. So those are absorbed. Well, actually, and I will I will draw the reflected blue. Blue is reflected. Now, if you mix this with yellow, what does yellow do? Well, if we go back here, yellow is a primary pigment. It absorbs blue, but it reflects red and green. So if it absorbs blue, then blue turns to heat when it hits this object. Blue is now being absorbed. And so you can kind of see that the, it's going to work against the other thing, right? If you mix them, this yellow is doing the opposite of what the blue did. The blue is trying to reflect blue, but the yellow is trying to reflect reflect the, uh, or sorry, absorb the blue. And then what's reflected here is the green and the red. And so when you try to mix them together, you have a problem. You've got... You've got these two being reflected and then absorbed. And here, you've got this absorbed and reflected. And it almost works out if you do it in just the right amounts. You'll have everything being absorbed. Right? Which means you'd end up with black. So mixing blue and yellow doesn't really give us green. But watch what happens when you mix. Instead of blue, if we use cyan the proper pigment color. So this is what we'll use for our blue, cyan, and yellow. So this is what happens when you really mix blue and yellow. So what does cyan do? Cyan basically absorbs red, and it reflects blue 
and green. That's why it looks green. All right, yellow absorbs, well, let's put reflects red, and it reflects green, but it absorbs blue. There's the blue. Okay, so it's absorbing, whoops, that is supposed to be black. It's absorbing red over here. It's absorbing blue over here. Blue. Now, if this is absorbing blue, that kind of cancels out the reflected blue when you mix them together. And if this is absorbing red, that cancels out the reflecting red when you mix them together. But since both colors are still reflecting green, then the, when you mix them, the only color being reflected now is green. And so blue and yellow make green. And that's because blue, right here, this blue, is not a primary color or a primary pigment. It's not. That's why it doesn't work. Now, when you mix blue and green, or blue and yellow, you'll still get greenish colors. But if you were to mix these two, you would probably end up by getting some kind of darker green, right? Like a hunter forest green, whereas this one would give you pure green. And the problem, of course, is that when you start dealing with different shades of colors, those shades cannot be made by mixing any two primary pigments or colors. So you have to start doing more complicated um, mixing. But ultimately, to get real pure green, you'd have to use a cyan color of paint, not actually blue. And so that's the subtractive theory. It's basically just the reverse. It's based on what is being absorbed. And this is the one that we would apply to art and painting and pigments of all kinds. Okay? All right. And that's why. So let's, let's take an example then of a banana. And let's see what we can do with a banana. I'm going to draw a banana here. Here's my yellow banana. Okay? The banana is yellow. Now, the banana is yellow to us because when we look at it in a white light, remember that white is a mixture of all three, red, green, and blue, what's happening is that red and green are being reflected back to our eyes. Right? And the blue is turning to heat, absorbed, and we don't see it, whereas the other two here are reflected. And that's what our eyes see, right? Our eye over here is seeing the reflected light. There's our eye looking at the light. We don't see what's absorbed. That's why it looks yellow, because we're looking at, if we're looking at the reflected light, that's additive theory, and red and green make yellow, two primary colors reflected there. And we call yellow a secondary color because it reflects two of the primary colors. But if we're looking at whatever is inside the, the banana that makes it yellow, there's a chemical in there, and that chemical absorbs blue. So it's a primary pigment because it absorbs the one color of blue. Okay. Well, what happens if we don't shine white light on the banana? What if instead I take the same banana, but I put my light through a filter? Everything we've been talking about so far is all about white light. So let's see what happens if I shine only blue. So in other words, here's my white light coming through, red, green, and blue, right? But I put a filter in front of here, like a colored piece of plastic, that only lets the blue light go through. So we block the red and the green. So you can do this in, in, on the stage, in the theater, right, with a blue spotlight or whatever, anything that just shines blue. Well, what would happen is the blue light would still be absorbed, bit, 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 turned to heat. Okay, there's my blue being absorbed by the banana. But because there is no red and green hitting the banana, there's nothing to reflect. Nothing reflects. And so, if nothing reflects, then the banana must appear to us, to the eye. I guess I could, my eye over here, 
what would this eye see? Well, when an eye sees no reflected light, the eye sees black. Whoops. So the banana would now appear to be black. Right? Now, what if instead we were to shine a filter that was green? And it would block the blue and the red. You can imagine what would happen. Right? Well, we can draw the picture one more time just for the visual. Why not? Here's the banana. My bananas are getting weirder and weirder shaped because I'm going faster and faster. Here's our red, green, and blue light coming in, so a white source of light. But let's put a green filter in front, a green piece of plastic, and only green can get through. We block the red and the blue. Well, according to what we said before, bananas can reflect blue and green, or sorry, red and green light. So the green would be reflected. There would be nothing to absorb because the red and the blue are not reaching the banana. The green would be reflected, and now the eye would say, oh, now the banana appears to be green. And so we have this banana, which is yellow in white light. It's black when we shine blue light on it, and it's green when we shine green light on it. So it's, it's tricky, because you might think, well, it, just be, it would be whatever color you shine on it, but that's not true. For green it is, because it reflects green. But when you shine blue on it, it turns black, because blue is absorbed by the yellow banana. Okay? All right. Now, um, so I guess what we're basically saying is that the colors that things appear to our eyes are not intrinsic properties of the object. The colors they reflect and absorb are intrinsic properties. But our eye can be fooled into thinking things are different colors depending on what kind of light we start with. So when it's under white light, it's fairly straightforward. But when you start messing with the colors of light by using filters, well, that's when everything gets a little bit weird and colors can look very different under different colors of light. And so essentially, you do a little exercise like this. You imagine a banana, right? Now we could do the same thing with a, with a cyan object or with a magenta object or any color object, really. It's just easier to use the primary ones when we're learning because you know, if it's, if it's sort of like orange, if you take an orange object, well, orange is not a primary color of light, and it's not a primary pigment either. And so there would be variations of reflect and absorb, and it would be more complex. We'd have to break down orange to figure out how we got orange, right? And figure out how much of each, and that's a little bit trickier. So this works better for learning just by using the primary colors first to understand the, the, the absorb and reflect. And then you can sort of imagine how you could play games with this and you could have objects that absorb some but not all, a little bit, they reflect a little bit but not all, and all these variations then can produce all the different colors. Okay, so that's the subtractive color theory, focusing on what's absorbed, and the three primary colors are cyan, magenta, and yellow, which is like the blue, yellow, and red of your grade, your kindergarten art class. They're almost the same thing. They're just not perfect, if you call them that. And that's why you never could get your really good black when you mix those paints. You always got a yucky brown. Okay? To get the black, which your printer can do easily, it needs cyan, yellow, and magenta. But cyan is just a shade of blue, and magenta is just a shade of red. So that's the opposite sort of way of looking at it. So you have to keep track, whether you're talking about additive, which is reflected light, or subtractive, which is absorbed light. As soon as 